Hi there, welcome to my channel. Look at this beautiful candle holder. That is our project for today. And yes, it lights up and I'm gonna show you exactly how I did that. But first we're gonna start by decoupaging this beautiful candle holder using Mod Podge, DuraClear. I got the candle holder from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna use pretty paper napkins and a product called Mulberry Paper. When you put Mulberry Paper on top of glass, it gives this beautiful, elegant crackled effect it's not hard to do i've got the best tips you're going to be able to do this right away i'm going to show you step by step i love this paper i'm definitely going to be doing more mulberry paper in the future so please subscribe to my youtube channel decoupage diy with joan marie domino and then please hit the bell and you'll get notifications every time i put up a new video all right let's go over to my crafting table Welcome to my crafting table. I'm going to show you how you can make these beautiful candle holders. I'm going to be using a product called Mulberry Paper. It's so pretty, it has all these little filaments and threads running through it. And I'm going to attach it to the glass using Mod Podge. When that's all done and dry, we're gonna use this napkin and attach all little pieces also with Mod Podge. Now, I got it in white, a big roll from Amazon. It was very inexpensive. I figure I'm gonna use white the most. You can go below and see all the supplies I used, including the mulberry paper. And of course, my napkins come from Vippy's Designs. Let's get started. Okay, the first thing I wanna do is get my jar nice and clean. I'm gonna take off that label because when I do these jars, I'm gonna go all the way around, including the bottom. Now, to get it all prepped and ready, I'm going to use regular alcohol. I'm going to just take an ordinary little cotton ball and I'm gonna go over the entire glass. I'm getting rid of smudges and grease so I have a nice clean surface to start with. I'm going to start tearing the mulberry paper into pieces. I'm not going to be using a scissor because I don't want a straight edge. It's kind of like what we do um, when we're decoupaging with napkins. And I'm just trying to do all different sizes and shapes. I don't want a straight edge, so not from the top of the paper either. So I'm also going to have some little pieces. And you're going to see how I use these as kind of fill-ins once I start laying the mulberry paper down onto the glass. Okay, my glass is inside a rice basket. The rice basket there's rice under there is going to keep the jar from rolling okay so there's my mod podge i'm rolling not shaking that's what i was told was the right way to do so that's how i do it now I'm putting it into a little cup just like that in here i have some water i'm going to dip my brush into the water and then i'm going to tap most of it off and then i'm going to put my brush into the glue and i'm going to put it onto the jar the reason i'm using water is because i found that it needed to be a little more wet, the glue, so it would soak completely through the mulberry paper. Mulberry paper is heavier than a napkin, so I didn't want to mix the Mod Podge with the water. I found that was too wet, so I have more control by dipping my brush into the water and then into the glue. So as I start to put this down, I'm kind of looking to fit it into kind of like a puzzle from one into the other. You're going to have some overlapping, but that's okay to have it a little bit overlapped because of all the little threads and fibers, it really doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm just gonna be finding pieces that fit. And another thing I wanna show you as I do this is when I put it down, I'm pressing pretty hard on that brush. And I'm doing that because I don't want any air bubbles and I do wanna get all of the glue out from underneath. So you could see there is a little bit of overlapping, but that's okay. I just found the more I did this, the more I was able to get the pieces to fit in a little bit better. I also want to smooth down all those fuzzies. And speaking of fuzzies, there is a smooth side and a fuzzy side on the mulberry paper. If you use the smooth side, you do get less little fuzzies at the end, but I found there was no difference in how it looked. Okay, so there's a little space, and that's what I mean you need those little pieces to fill those kinds of spaces in. Now I'm getting a biggish piece here, but I don't care. It's gonna go underneath the glass and I'm going to do the bottom of the glass anyway. All right, let's give that a little bit of time to dry. Before I go any further, you need to keep some hand wipes on your craft table with you as you're gonna find, you're gonna be able to touch this way more than you can napkins because the mulberry paper is 
heavier, okay? So just keep that in mind that you can kind of touch it, even slide it around a little bit if you want to get it in the spot that you want. And you don't have to worry about it tearing. It's not that fragile. However, you are going to have a lot of glue on your fingers. So the more you do this, the more glue you're going to have. So I'm just saying, make sure you have your little handy wipes on the table. All right, so I'm going to put down another piece and I want to show you what I did here. Okay, if you look by my thumb, there is a little open space there. And once you put a candle in, you're actually going to see that space. So all you have to do is put on a little bit of glue, just like that, and then cover up with one of those little small pieces. And see how I'm touching it so much, all right? And remember, you have to give this time to dry also as you go around. This side glass um, candle holder really goes quick because it's not that big. And I'm down to my very last section and I'm just filling in. And again, there are these little spots. You're going to need the little pieces to fill in just like that. And there's another space down there at the bottom. And again, I'm not going to care if it overlaps or goes onto the bottom. I'm going to do the bottom anyway. So again, just take a look and make sure everything is filled in. Looks good to me. And you're going to notice as it dry, it's not as white. Okay, we're going to do the bottom. Okay, my whole candle holder is completely done except for the bottom. So I'm going to do it the same way as I did the sides, which is dipping into a little bit of water and then into the glue and I tap the water off. And I'm going to tell you now that after a while, you're going to find that the glue is already starting to get a little bit of diluted from the water. So you're going to get to a point where you probably do not need to dip it into the water anymore. It's going to be wet enough. And I'm down to my last piece. See how it slid? That means there's probably a little too much water in that glue now. And my fingers are very sticky. Okay, so let's take a look around and see if there's any spaces. And there's one. And it's good. You can see my finger through it. So that's why I know I need to put just a little piece there just to cover up that little hole just like that just glue no big deal okay the last thing we're going to do before we move on to putting the napkin on is to look at all the fuzzies we want to get rid of all the little fuzzies that are on there that's why it's better to put the fuzzy side down and the smooth side up and i'm doing it just with mod podge so just go around and take a look until you get them all down now we can go on to putting the napkin on look how pretty that is now onto the napkin. When we decoupage with napkins, we only use the top printed layer. So I'm putting a little glue between my fingers and up in the corner, and I'm pulling the two bottom layers off just like that. Some napkins have one extra ply, some have two, but look how easy it comes apart when you just use a little glue between your fingers, and then you're done. Now on to removing the leaves from the napkin. I'm just going around the napkin with some water on a brush and that was probably more water than I really needed and I'm just kind of pulling the leaf right off of the napkin. Okay that's a little bit better I think with the water. You don't want it too wet because the napkin will just pull apart. So tapping off a little bit like I just did is probably um, the better thing to do. So when you're done doing that you have a nice deckled or rough edge that's going to blend into the mulberry paper and that's what we want and it'll look good right on top and you're not going to see the edge so cut out as many or deckle out as many little leaves as you think you'll need. here's all the leaves i removed from the napkin probably more than i need to cover the jar i've got my jar back into the rice basket and remember i'm rolling my mod Podge, not shaking and i'm going to put it some more back into the cup now, when I put the glue on, I put the glue directly on top of, look how pretty, I have to keep looking at it. I put the glue directly on top of the mulberry paper, like that, but I don't do the entire uh, mulberry paper. I'm trying to explain this where the leaf is going to lie. Instead, I kind of tuck some underneath and I am pressing. I want it to be flat, but if you notice, I'm not using saran wrap and the nice thing about the mulberry paper is, well, we don't have to be as concerned with the wrinkles. You're not going to see them anyway. So you're going to just go around the jar and just fit the little leaves in um, like you want. I would say less is probably more. Don't put too many on. You can always go back and add. Look how pretty. 
And I like to work with color. I like to put in oranges, yellows, there's some burgundies. And I like to put the, the heavier, darker colors towards the bottom, just like I did with those little berries. I found this nice little, I don't know, fern, I'm not sure what that is, little branch. That fit in really well there. And now I do have that little space and that's okay because I have little leaves too. That's why you wanna take off as many different little shapes so you'll have enough to fit all the way around. Well, the first part of my candle holder is dry. Actually, I did um, probably a little bit more than half. And now that that's all dry, I can go in and add some more. And remember, I have my glass candle holder in that rice basket, okay? There's rice underneath that in a bag and it's going to hold that jar and keep it from rolling around. And again, I'm fitting the different little leaves inside there. I'm filling in, I'm using shapes. I'm not going crazy. Remember, like I said, um, less is definitely more because you can always add more leaves if you think there are spaces. All right, our candle holder is all dry, the leaves are dry, the mulberry paper. Now I'd add a little glitz, but I'm not going to be using the Mod Podge Extreme Glitter Glue. I'm going to use the Extreme Glitter Paint, not hologram. I'm going to use a color called Champagne. It's so pretty. My friend Evelyn showed this to me and I had to get it and I love how it looks. It's a little bit more delicate than the glue there. It looks creamy, but actually when the glitter dries, it's not going Going to have that creaminess to it anymore. You're only going to see this incredibly fine glitter. It's just amazing. And I'm going to say champagne, I guess, is a good name to call it, but I think it looks like rose gold. Look how pretty that is. But it's delicate. It's not like, you know, super, I don't know, super glittery, just delicate. It kind of goes along with the candle holder. I'm going to do the bottom too, just like that. And then when I'm done, I'm just going to kind of look it all over to make sure there's glitter all over it. And then I'm gonna put it off to dry. Okay, so the candle holder is all dry. Look at that beautiful glitter, that's dry now. And we can move on to, there it is, champagne, love it. We can move now on to doing the sealant. I'm using Dora Clear Gloss Varnish. This is a brush on. I'm gonna put some in a little cup I like this Dora Clear because it's very low odor, so I don't have to use it outside. Of course, if you have any problems with any odors, then you should always use it in a ventilated area. So I'm going to go over the entire jar, and I'm going to tell you that I'm not using the rice basket because I'm moving very, very quickly around just like that. And I have it on top of a piece of plastic, um, so it's not going to stick, and I'm doing the bottom as well. I want to compare my two glass candle holders side by side. That is glossy and it has the glitter in it, if that's what you like. I kind of like this one. It's got that mid-century vibe. It doesn't have all the glitter, but both are very, very pretty. So it's just a matter of taste on what you like. I did put a lot of the gloss on that one, so it really looks pretty. Now I'm going to show you, um, Art's going to come back in the studio with me. I'm going to show you how these look with the lights inside. So pretty. I dim the lights a little bit in the studio so you can have a good look at what these little candle holders look like once I put some tea lights in them. So these are tea lights. I get them from Target. They have a nice flicker. They last a long time. They are my favorites. So I'm going to put them in first. And the one on the right has the glitter and all of the shine from the sealant. And this one on the left, it's just got a matte finish. Now, as a recap, this is what I use to decoupage. It is mulberry paper. It's so pretty and elegant. It has all these little threads running through it. And I think I gave you some really, really good tips. So you can make these candles right away. All you need to do is get a little glass jar. Okay, now I'm going to show you the other lights that I use. These are LED lights. These are down in the description. You can get them right from the links I put down there. Now these are, you don't have to go around and turn them all on. These are done with a remote control. So much fun. Okay, so here's the remote control and I'm gonna click it on just like this and I don't have to go around and turn all the tea lights on. And I can even turn it up. Look how cute that is. I love that. You can put them on a shelf and light them all up at the same time. So now I have to ask you a question. Okay. Um, what do you think about the 
studio work I'm doing with my crafting table that you can get a really close-up view of what I'm doing, please let me know down in comments. And I also answer just about all my comments. So write something down there. Even just say hello. I am there with you. Now, I'm doing more mulberry paper um, videos coming up. I love this stuff. So subscribe to my YouTube channel, Decoupage DIY with Joan Marie Domino. Give this video a thumbs up. I hope you like it. Don't forget to hit the blue bell because you're not going to miss any of my videos. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.